we just went to another one baby delivery and then we're gonna have another later in the morning i did things like we call rounding which means you chat with your patients and then you do a little physical exam and then you report back to the team and then you all discuss what's going on with the patient and then you go uh, your senior doctor and you together go and see the patient and like discuss the plan with the parents describe pediatrics it is actually you spend a lot of time reassuring parents who are very scared understandably that something is really serious is going wrong with their kid they're feeling like their concerns regarding their child's health are have been dismissed and moving forward that i want to make sure that uh patients and their families are feeling heard or at least like addressed or sometimes we are actually doing a lot of things to uh try to investigate something but we don't always tell them that we're doing all these different things and so they might even though we are taking it super seriously they might not know that we are taking it seriously so just like really including them as part of um as part of that so you have to know about every single system in the body really like everything from the neural to the gut the system the heart and just with kind of everything in between and outside of that so just differential diagnosis which is the all the different conditions that could be causing what's going on is so broad and i was lost and i didn't necessarily know what kind of investigations or tests and couldn't remember all the physical exams to do for like every single um thing but the supervisors was like you know this is your year to be a student um you need to like just just think of it instead of putting so much pressure on yourself to be able to regurgitate all these different things that it could be or know all the exact like hard science and pathophysiology is just instead think of this as a moment to just add to your experience bank so just get a sense of lots and lots of normals into your brain so that you are able to also recognize when something is just not normal and then when there's some rare cases that are like you the abnormal so just like feel that just like really get a sense and a feel or a listen or a look and learn that that's abnormal um, but really what's most helpful is just to get lots of normals into your brain. And for me, like sometimes I'll be like listening to them like, oh, this is abnormal. And it's like something totally normal just because I haven't had this perfect sense of the range of normal. Sometimes I don't know, it's, it's, it's I think something's normal, but it's actually something abnormal because it's maybe more of a subtle finding. So um, I find that frustrating for myself that I'm like, oh, I wish I could catch this, but I realize maybe um, these are people that, you know, people go through so much training and they get experience and that's what makes them great. And I shouldn't think of, you know, pressure myself to you know be someone who's like has like 20 years of experience I like like to joke that I'm a useless med student I'm a dumb med student because like I feel like I don't know much and I am not really that helpful but one of the uh, nurses was really lovely and took me aside and was like hey like I don't want to ever hear you call yourself useless or die if you tell yourself that too many times it kind of gets into your unconscious and you really think deeply of yourself as dumb and useless and that's not how you should think of yourself like realize like you are a student you are not expected to know things or be able to do a ton like you are where you should be um so stop telling that to yourself and then also see yourself as a professional you can't be it like you need to like have a lot of confidence in yourself because patients and staff are gonna other like allied health are gonna have um your expectations on you to be the one who's knowledgeable and confident um and so you don't want to be the, like joking around that you're useless or dumb and it, that, that can really scare um you know patients and patients families if they ever you know hear that kind of thing and um or you ever just because unconsciously you believe that so deeply you like give that off and that impression that you you believe that you're useless or dumb and it doesn't like make you feel reassuring you so you need to like express yourself as a confident and knowledgeable person and um, comfortable in your space um just learning to get comfortable with not knowing things trying to fill in those gaps but also just realizing it's very normal and i will always like not know things and just learning to sit with that feeling back from emerge um the more i get more feel more capable and the longer i'm in clerkship i feel like very glad i chose medicine and more and more like this is like you know definitely my calling This is the first meal since 1.30 p.m. yesterday. I'm, I'm finally leaving the hospital. Uh, it's my third day here at the hospital. I came here on Monday and I haven't left yet because I stayed overnight. I'm on is the neonatal intensive care unit. All the preterm babies or babies with problems with jaundice, low sugars, Kind of a little bit more complicated are in for a stay i just finished my day at the neonatology follow-up clinic following patients that are used to be preterm and now have some 
you know, very complicated births who were in the hospital for a long time. And so now they're being followed up. So we do a lot of like neurology and neurodevelopmental stuff. Yeah, what does pediatrics look like? Well, ideally at the hospital for 7.30, like basically round on our patients, basically just reading about labs, chatting with the nurse about how the patient's doing overnight. If they're usually at 8.30, then we, the kind of the supervising doctor, the attending comes around and then we go around as a group and it could be like, I have a patient who is, you know, is three days old and they are here because they were born preterm and right now we are treating this baby for jaundice and like you know the level of bilirubin is this and so we do that and then we come up with a apply like well i think the bilirubin is this level and if you put it on the chart i think it's above the threshold so we should start phototherapy I think the nice part I like is about inpatient is good is that you get to like follow the patients for a while usually they stay for a while so you get to like really know them which is like quite nice. Oh something exciting. Oh I got to see I guess one of the babies had to be resuscitated. So we also as pediatrics so we take care of kids in the NICU and then we also take care of kids that are some of the kids that are up in first square. We also have this, this really cool thing at BC Women's called first square. The focus population is moms that um, that might not have a stable home or struggle with uh, the substance uh, use and then as they're pregnant they can start staying there and get care and then when the babies are born they stay for a while and it's a very like kind of welcoming holistic place uh, for care which is like really nice and another thing I really like about women's is they have this thing called the new beginnings clinic um, and they serve uh, basically people who don't get covered by MSP, which is our provincial like medical services plan um, that most people are covered by. So like new immigrants, refugees, and so it mentioned that the care served by this new beginnings clinic is, I believe it's completely free. But I do appreciate that women, they're really making, trying to fill in these like gaps in care to provide this care and all this is like for free and it's kind of amazing um and then i remember thinking when i was over at the other hospital for my um, PET ctu which was like older children i guess was there was a lot of issues regarding affordability of the treatments for the babies so just something as simple as like oh we have a lot of babies with anemia and iron um iron tablets and things like pills like that are not covered and they can actually get quite expensive and so just like having thoughts of that like wow it's makes me sad that these things are so expensive and affordability is like the issue um, i do think like overall in the healthcare system like resources and things like that is like a big issue still and like for like many most people and most like departments like you know like if we could afford this we would have more of this and that so um definitely is still an issue but anyways i just I don't know, when I think of like kind of clinics like that, um, or like like wards like that, um, that kind of do this more compassionate care, I uh, think I'd like to, you know, work places like that. All of my pediatric textbook reading. Finishing up this chapter on infectious diseases for pediatrics. Heading home after a long day in the NICU. Huh. And I feel a lot more capable this week compared to last week.